Hello once again, my name is Chico and welcome to Light of the World. This is the third episode and I'm glad to wish you a very happy new year. I hope 2021 brings you more fortune and prosperity than the 2020. Well, we thank God for guiding us and protecting us through 2020, but we are hoping for a better year next year. Thank you so much for tuning in. And with that, I wish you a prosperous new year. Well, look at this moon, it's beautiful, isn't it? And some of you might have guessed why I've chosen the moon. Anyway, the moon on its own would have been just another dull orb if it wasn't for the sun's rays. The moon has no light on its own. The moon shines because its surface reflects light from the sun. Just like you and I, people can see the good in us. People can see the light of God through us. And we are made to do that. We should shine before people so that they will see the glory of God in us. And let me start with a question. What do we do when we see misery and suffering around us? There are two types of people. Some people are discouraged by the misery and suffering people face. And there are people when they see the same thing, they are encouraged to do something good for the suffering people. Here is a band called Hawk Nelson. It's a very popular Christian band and the singer of the band is Jonathan Steingart. His father is a pastor and he had been born again at a very early age and he had been in the worship team and he also leads the worship and soon after that they made a band very popular Hawk Nelson and but this year earlier this year in April when he went to Africa he saw the misery and the suffering, the hunger faced by the children there and he was so discouraged. He thought, he thought, how can such a good God do this? And he denounced his faith in his Instagram page. He's no longer a believer. We should pray for him. On the other hand, here is Mother Teresa. She came from a town called Skopje in North Macedonia. She came to India and she also saw the misery, suffering, the hunger, the pain that the children of Kolkata were suffering. She was so touched. She had compassion for them. And she did not stop there. She did not just whine about how God could be so merciless but she took it as an opportunity to let the light shine she chose to be a light that reflected the heart of God in our previous message we have talked about the importance of starting what we believe is the right thing to do and that destinations are reached only if there was a beginning and we should dream of a big destination and not a big beginning and we should be encouraged by the life of Christ he started out in a manger but he ended up with a name above all names and for today I have chosen the title make it your goal to face your mountain we're going to talk about goals today and before we start I want us to know that goals are not meant to be easy they are supposed to be achieved they are they are not to be taken they are not to be given they are to be fought for and I have chosen this mountain this mountain is called the Anarpuna and it is in Nepal. It is the 10th highest mountain in the world and it is one it is the most difficult mountain to climb. 
the most treacherous and I have I have kept this mountain because our goals could be could be a mountain like this because goals aren't meant to be easy and yes mountains because when we get to the top when we conquer our mountain our light will shine brighter when we reach the top you will have to fight for it we weren't meant to take anything we are and we will always have to work for our goals because in Genesis 3.13 God said to Adam because you listened to your wife and ate food from the tree about which I commanded you you must not eat from it cursed is the ground because of you through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life Bear in mind that the scripture says cursed is the ground, not Adam. And therefore, men are not cursed. We are not cursed. It is the ground that is cursed. And to work is a blessing. If you read this passage, 2 Thessalonians 3.10 For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. It sounds kind of harsh, but if you read it this way, the one who is willing to work more shall eat more. The more you work, the harder you work, the more successful you will become. And so praise God for that. Work is a blessing. It's never a curse. So if we want to succeed in life, there will be mountains to face. We're going to have to fight. We'll have to struggle. It's going to cost us physically, mentally, and even our previously hard-earned possessions may have to be sacrificed. But we will achieve our goal. Not only this, but our journey to achieve our goals can also be humiliating and discouraging and at times they can be totally they can seem totally pointless but a big destination requires immense work and there's no other way it's not for the weak he did not want us to be weak what God wants us to be can clearly be seen in Joel 3:10 this is God saying, let the weak say, I am strong. And in Exodus chapters 3 and 4, Moses made a bunch of excuses. You can read Exodus 3 and 4 and find out the kind of excuses God, I mean, Moses made to God. The last excuse he made was he was not eloquent enough. He had no way with words. But what did God do? God brought a helper in Aaron. God made Aaron the spokesperson for Moses. So there are no excuse. Excuses are man-made. Erasing excuses is God's nature. Don't get confused or mixed up with human goals and the grace of God. We will talk on grace, how it is free being a gift of God and how fortunate we are to be under grace. We'll talk about grace in the future episode. However, in this session, we will look at grace as a goal God set for himself. Having said that, it is God's own will and plan before the foundation of the world to see that all peoples of the world be saved to save us from eternal damnation in hell that's what the goal of God is and if God has a goal he will accomplish it his goal is to have us seated in heaven at his right hand side 
even if the goal is tempered by the sin brought on by the disobedience of one man, he will find another way to take us to him. He will find a way. It doesn't matter how painful. It doesn't matter how costly it will be. How difficult and broken-hearted he may have to be. His goal will be achieved. And not just that, it was not just the urge and determination to accomplish the goal. It was his love for the people. It was his love for human that made God determined. It was his love for us that caused him to do whatever it took to save us. God spent all he had to accomplish his goal. He did, he did all he can to get it done and it hasn't fully come to pass. It's been more than 2,000 years since the death of Christ, but not everyone has been saved. There are more than 17,000 people groups in the world today. And 7,000, more than 7,000 people groups have not heard of the gospel of Christ. The work is still going on, but the goal God has set for himself will be achieved through you and I. His goal, his mission will come to pass. He gave it all he had. As you can see it in the most common and most read Bible verse, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his only begotten Son so that humankind can be saved from eternal damnation. So, in your life, face your mountain and conquer it, no matter what you have to do. Give it all you got. With God, all things are possible. If life was meant to be a bed of roses, we wouldn't need God except to be saved. But here on earth, we need God because we are helpless without Him. When we are brokenhearted, it is God who comforts us the best. When we are in need, it is God who provides us. And when we are sick, God heals. That is why we need God here. When we face a mountain of problem, it doesn't matter how big or insignificant our faith may seem. If we put our faith in God, He will turn the mountain, He will turn our mountain of problems into a size of a mustard seed. The size of your face does not matter. It's where and on whom you put that faith that matters. Matthew 17, 20 Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So in this coming year, know this, nothing will be impossible for you. If you put your trust, your faith, and believe in God, it will accomplish more than you ever think possible. Have a great new year. Thank you so much. God bless you.